On this episode of SETV, we tag along with Mike to the grocery store to see how he spends over $200 on just milk. We also give you an exclusive first look at the Triolite Trio Track 2400. And of course, we'll be going out in the back lots to see what Mike can find this time. I'm Bennett Snyder here, uh, lot manager. Today we're going to try and find some weights for Keith down in Burlington. Keith needs these weights. He says they're BL8060s. They don't really ever give me much to go by. And I have no clue where they're at. So I just kind of have to drive around and look for certain things. But I think they're over here, so let's go and check it out. We're looking for a BL8060. Right here. Got some little baby weights for you. I'm gonna throw them on the forklift over here and give them to Mike so that he can take them down to Burlington. That way they can go to their new home. Except there's supposed to be six of them and there's only four. So we're gonna have to find two more. You know, over here at Skolton's Equipment, you don't really need to go to the gym because it seems like we're always having to pick up these weights and stuff. I mean, the gyms are for city boys. Us country boys get our strength from doing stuff like this. You know, back in the day, I used to be able to throw a 150 pound weight right over my shoulder and walk it over there with no forklift. But I kind of learned that that's not a good idea. To throw your back out real quick. Still gotta find two more weights. Hey, look at here. Found one more, it was hiding. I think we only have five. I don't think there's any over here. Hey, check it out. The last one, here it is. This is what makes the, draw, the job a little bit hard, you know, because they couldn't all be in a pile right together. So you have to just continue looking and uh, you may or may not find what you're looking for. Sometimes we don't, but uh, for the most part, we end up with six weights here. So now that we have the package, we got to make sure it stays safe from here to the transport truck. You don't want one of these falling off the forks and falling into the asphalt and maybe messing it up because then the boss man gets a little ticked. So we try not to do that. You don't want the boss man ticked. So take it nice and easy. Fifty five pounders, and that there is how you find something for Keith. All you need is a forklift and a set of muscles. <laughs> You want me to start talking? Sure. So I don't know if you guys heard this, but the dairy industry uh, across the nation is running into a little bit of a lull. In the last couple of years, the price has been pretty low. We're hoping that switches around and goes back the other way for the sake of our dairy farmers locally. So we need to go get some milk though. And so we're gonna go to our local grocery store, pick up all different types of milk we can, uh, we can get our hands on and doing our part to take care of a problem in the dairy industry. Let's go. We're going green today. Normally my wife doesn't like it when I go to the grocery store to get her things. Cause she says I come back with all sorts of things that I probably shouldn't have bought. But today is not 
for my family, it's for the uh, Sculpton's Equipment family. So I'm allowed to go shopping at the grocery store. So we got a lot of selection here. A lot of our customers are dairy farmers and majority of them ship to Dairy Gold. So I'm sure that'll be a majority of our cart. But we, there are some other customers we have that do other brands and try to support them all. 2% is probably the most common. Dairy Gold Hole. Uh, we better grab some more twos. There's one thing that I don't think is milk. Tandem nut milker milks two nuts at a time. Uh, it's comfortable for them. I don't even know how this is legal they put this in the milk aisle. They want to be milked. You'll never see a happier nut than a freshly milked nut. You can't milk an almond. Twinbrook Creamery, another local customer of ours. Well, they do 2% as well. It's a creamery, so the cream separates to the top. We better get some of that. I ain't gonna lie, I do like their chocolate milk. And they also got this uh, strawberry. My Shan, another local customer of ours. I believe that's the stuff we're looking for. Dairy Gold, back at Dairy Gold. So Dairy Gold's got it over there, they got it over here. They also have great chocolate milk. We'll go paper on this one. Low fat chocolate milk. I love my handheld milks, that's my favorite. Kind of a 2% guy trying to watch the way it's New Year, but we should probably get a bunch of handhelds. We might have to get more handhelds. They only have four of those. How much milk can you grab at a time? Everyone likes chocolate milk. Ooh, strawberry milk. Now this is a new one. I never had salted caramel milk. I'm looking forward to trying that one out, but um, what color cow is that? Oh, it's definitely a hybrid. Probably, uh, probably one with udders. Uh, fun game to try if you're looking for a new game to try. It's called uh, Edward's uh, Chocolate Milk Hands. You duct tape them to your hands, both, and you have to finish drinking both of them before someone will unduct tape them to your hands. It's usually uh, a game that's worth a lot of laughs. Uh, let's go over here. See, again, I just don't understand this. This should not be in the milk aisle. I think it's more of a gimmick these days. Uh, almond milk, I don't think is real milk. Anyone ever do a whipped cream challenge? You're gonna need some whipped cream. I don't know what we're gonna use it for. We're gonna definitely whip some cream. Do they drink whipping cream sometimes for sport? Half and half for your coffee? If you don't put half and half in your coffee, well, your coffee probably don't taste very good. And we're going into the yogurts. Did you know yogurt is a dairy product? Got all sorts of brands here. I'm actually overwhelmed. We have some customers in the Tillamook area. One of my favorites is definitely the berries. It supports our local berry industry. Raspberries, strawberries. I don't know, they just got the little ones. These are like shooter yogurts. Good and creamy. Shooter style. Oh, did you know sour cream is a dairy product? Yeah. Grab some more milk. <laughs> what, what kind of milk did you grab today? The red kind. The red the whole. Oh yeah, there you go. Sour cream. Uh, Dairy Gold makes a. Yeah, but that's just the one I grabbed. Yeah, no, that's yeah, the best. That's the best time. Yep. We got a, one more dairy product I forgot about. It's way over here. Come on. So we better grab some Tillamook cheese. And there's all sorts of other manufacturers. Dairy Gold also makes great cheese, medium cheese. And Dairy Gold's local. Yes, they're local. They're local. So we better grab some Dairy Gold. I do like uh, the the direction that Dairy Gold's going on their branding. It, it definitely pops out at you at the uh, shopping counter. Butter, the last product I think I forgot about was butter. Dairy Gold makes probably the best butter I've ever tasted. Now, do you know what the difference between red and blue butter is? We should do both, one of each, just to keep everyone happy. Butter, you ever tried a food you normally eat with butter, without butter, it just doesn't taste like the same thing. Is this real cheese? Comment below. Let's go back here and see what other milk we forgot left behind. I think this almond milk's expiring. I just don't think anyone's buying it. Yeah, definitely. They should put it on the discount shelf. Dairy Gold definitely figured out an equation scientifically to get a lactose-free milk. I don't know how they did it, but they have definitely, they succeeded there. I just don't really think I'm gonna do any favors getting lactose-free milk. We better get some shooter paper styles. This fridge is falling apart, I think, a little bit. For my weightlifting program. I don't lift weights. Buttermilk. You wanna film buttermilk? I don't even know what that is. Let's just keep that one out so I don't look stupid. Any guess how much this is gonna be? Are you recording? Yeah. Lactose coma coming up. You sold this much milk today? Uh, no, I have not. Yeah, you don't have to ID for milk. That's the best part about oh. it. <laughs> $200 worth of milk. $200 worth of milk. $201.47 to be exact. 
Right on, we broke 200. Approved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these carts weren't made to get on this much weight. <laughs> well, that was our milk uh, experience. We're always looking for new ways to use milk. So comment below, milkshakes, whatever you got, recipes, if you're interested to hear them. Hey, this is Mike with Skolton's Equipment. And I'm Forrest with Skolton's Service. And behind us is the brand new, never really been seen before, uh, the Trio Track 2400 New Edition. It's the largest self-propelled, self-loading mixer that Trio Elite makes, and it's built from the ground up to be a mixer wagon. As you can tell, it's all self-contained. Everything from cutting your face on the silage, to mixing it, to discharge. You hit that button, are you tall enough? <laughs> As you can see, access to service components is extremely easy. Hydraulic filters. Hold on, of course. Yeah. That looks like a JCB filter. Why would Funny you mentioned that, Mike. JCB provides the powertrain for the majority of this machine. Front axle, rear axle, and a four speed transmission are all the same that you'd find in your standard JCB Agri Load All, providing proven quality components and long life cycles. 2400 size mixer comes with an FTP engine. It's a six cylinder inline common rail. 260 horsepower at the crank. The great thing that Triolet did utilizing that engine in this machine is you have no DPF filter. You have to use AdBlue and SCR, but all emissions are met without a DPF filter. So Good news. Have, you don't have to stop and do that annoying regen. No regens necessary. This machine is equipped with a quadra steer system, the same as you'd see on your load all. So you have crab steer, four wheel steer, or two wheel steer lock. It's fully dot legal. This machine will travel up to 25 miles an hour. You have stop tail turn lights, as well as rear work lights and a beacon to indicate you're slow moving. A reverse camera, which can also be run at full time on the dash to see where you're going. Continuing around the machine, we have another premix discharge, as well as a right-hand side camera so you can control the distance to your bunks when operating on this machine. Well, some also people use them just to drop it on the floor in an alleyway if they don't have bunks. They can use yep. the door on both sides for that. This engine automatically slides in and out with four bolts and one C-clamp, and then it electrically slides itself in and out to allow you for ease of maintenance, as well as to clean it, make sure you can get all the chaff off so you don't have any thermal events. When we finish our walk around, Mike, we'll come over here and we'll run it in. This is our very simple little in-out controller here, although it requires a special key to verify that we do this safely and it doesn't happen while you're operating or when you're not ready. All right, we're now sliding it in. See, no effort at all, just slides right in. You don't have to line anything up. It self meshes your hydraulic gearbox and for your hydrostats. See, it's fully in. Most of your comp competitive mixers run an engine in the back. You end up with a bouncy ride. This keeps your engine centered in your machine, gives you a lower profile, smoother ride. One really cool feature I found with this is it runs a clean fix fan, which is a reversing fan system. However, there's a little twist. It's all auto. But when this machine's in discharge mode, it will not reverse the fan, preventing you from blowing chaff in your animal's eyes in the bunks. We'll come around here. We have our sliding surface for our cab. Our cab will slide all the way back. So the front of the cab's up here, and you can see your whole stack. Do you know, Mike, that Trioli has a top, the highest capacity for a self-propelled mixer of a 20-foot face? Another thing that the new addition does is they raise the cab for the belt. Because everybody's trying to feed more cows quicker, you want more material under your belt. We raise the cab height 75 millimeters additionally to allow more feed to travel up your belt. For you guys who have bunkers and will be doing a lot on concrete, this is a removable cutter bar. So you can remove it, replace it as time wears on. On average, a silage that's faced with a triolet mixer or a triolet cutter has a five degree lower surface temperature and that's Celsius, making it so you guys have a longer lasting bunker. One thing this machine is equipped with is your auto contour facing. So you don't have to have your operator moving multiple different levels to get a smooth contour. He simply puts it in auto contour mode, raises it to the top of the stack, 
and it brings it down in a straight line, even curve. He raises it back up and it does the next cut in the exact same parameters to make sure that stack is nice and even. The, the smoother your face, the better your silage lasts. Not only does your silage last longer, your employees and anyone around that stack is safer because you don't have a big wow in it for an avalanche of silage to happen and bury someone. It's safety, a great point, Mike. Safety and quality. Of course, is cab pretty quiet inside? It's very quiet, Mike. When we're running this, the beautiful thing about this machine is it's meant to operate between 15 and 1800 RPMs. So your pumps are all variable displacement, so you don't need to have your engine running wide open. You get full cutter speed, full hydraulics functions at 15 to 1800 RPMs, depending on the load. So Mike, it's a great point. It does operate quietly. Cab's pretty luxurious. They've done a lot of improvements on this. It's got a heater, AC, a refrigerator, cooler, as well as a camera display in the dash to make sure you're operating safely on your farm. I think we covered everything for today on this. Just a quick synops here. And remember, if, if mixing's mixing your game, game Skolton's the name. I'm gonna start this up and try this out. Just smooth, quiet. I'm gonna shut the door so we can operate this safely, but we'll run it around. You guys can see the auto contour work. So at Skolton's Equipment, we have a large lot. We have a lot of space, we have a lot of parts on the ground, waiting for that what if day, if it might happen, where we might need something that's in this row of stuff. We're here today on back lot archeology. span I'm gonna pick one of these items and actually tell you what it's for. Come on. It's time for another back lot archeology. span And we're going to the way back lot of Skolton's Equipment across the bridge. Uh, it's the nature preserve back here. Uh, there's all kinds of bunnies, squirrels, interesting types of birds some people I've never probably seen before. Uh, seagulls. Uh, once upon a time I was walking here and there came across a big pile of uh, bear, bear, bear uh, droppings. So we know there's resident bears back here. So if you're thinking about coming and stealing something, there's a bear back here. He's going to get you. Come on, let's go see if we can find something really interesting. Probably 10 years ago or so, or even further back, we, uh, we did some truck, semi-truck modifications for silage wagons and putting silage boxes on trucks. And what we have here is a remnant of that era. It's a, it's a topper for a, a semi-truck, like a wind, what do you call it? Spoiler, wind spoiler. And we took it off and we saved it because we thought we'd someday just need it. I believe it came off an international, but I always thought it'd be cool if you could buy it, bring it home. Holy smokes, there's some ice in it. Buy it and bring it home and uh, put it in your backyard. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, boy. Woo, Nelly! <laughs> Buy it and bring it home and it could be like a dog kennel or something. You come here and you offer us money for this, like some sort of money, I bet you we'll let you take it home. Currency, definitely American dollars. We don't want no funny money. I better roll it back over to this. I'm gonna get in trouble for disturbing this piece, this relic. There's some cowboy cowboy teenagers that probably want to put this on their like half ton pickup. And then they can put a sleeper up there when they get kicked out of their parents' house or something, they go sleep in the top of their half ton pickup. A DQ parking lot, yeah. There's two pieces to this. This is the top for it. Yeah, this is a two piece topper. Okay, I take that back. Now we need big dollars for this thing because this is the second piece to that topper. And so we can make a complete semi truck out of this. I'm sure if you bring us money for this too, we will let you take it home. But it goes on top of that one. So if you want to make your half ton a half ton semi, we got what you need. So what we have here, my dad had a uh, rental house and one of the tenants, when they moved out, they left this gym behind. And uh, it's got a hood. So you don't have to worry about that if you want this, but it's got a high boy seat. Definitely meant for racing. Not much lawn mowing going on with the, it doesn't have the mower deck under it, but definitely a racing craftsman series. If you come and uh, give us some sort of cash, I guarantee you we will load this up for free. It's the craftsman series lawnmower. I ain't sitting on it. All right, what else we got back here? So what we have here is uh, what's left of a Jaguar 890. Uh, what happened here is it it got too close to a John Deere 
and it caught on fire because the John Deere was on fire. And what we do at Skolton's Equipment, we just, uh, sometimes we collect this type of thing in case we need something off of it, even though uh, it's, we're not gonna salvage it to make it a chopper again, but I believe the engine's still in it and the engine's totally fine. But if you come here and try to steal parts off it, remember that bear, it's gonna get you. Let's move on. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss what Mike finds next on Backlot Archaeology. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. I ain't gonna, I don't want to touch this stuff. <laughs>